every country has got different kind of food security agenda, so it's hard to say who should do more investment for the value chain most. Um, when it comes to the severity of the food insecurity, South Asian countries are very, very bad. Um, uh, well, not just for the caloric intake sense, but also the hidden hunger, that's uh, the micronutrient deficiency. That's really, really surprisingly high, comparable to the Sub-Saharan Africa. And so their distribution system, investment into the, um, the better transaction cost of this, uh, the food distribution, that might be a priority for addressing the, the, the hidden hunger. Also, um, in terms of use of natural resources, water use, <laughs> water use you know, sort of deficiency is the, uh, the major concern in some parts of the South Asia. Like, it's not just the seasonal drought and so forth. Surface water just, just are not enough to support the ongoing agriculture. So what's happening is that a lot of people just pumping water from the ground ground sources. And in the NASA's uh, sat satellite image, you already capture that that is increasing depleting, and then it's not going to be sustainable. In next 15 years, there has to be something done. Otherwise, there will be no water whatsoever for the agriculture or drinking or whatever, whatever that they use. So that is also a pressing food security agenda. Um, when it comes to the, um, the impact of this more efficient supply chain on the food security, I don't have this verified, very good, uh, complete case. But maybe let me explain just a couple of examples that, that we are already engaged in. One is about uh, storage facilities in Afghanistan. Rural Afghanistan do not have any storage facilities at all. At, at all. And they don't have any rural electrification. So what we invest in is the non-electric, just with the, uh, the structure that would insulate and then to extend the product life of this uh, potato and onion. It's a very, very simple investment. Yet, the reduction of the food loss in the food, food, um, food producing areas is not really good enough just to supply a substantial number of people, um, um, normal consumption, well, the potatoes and the onion is equivalent to this uh, hard, um, lean season sort of a staple. So it's very, very important investment. Um, in a sense that, that getting the more food on the table. And more importantly, with the storage, with the extended life of the, the product, they could pick the time when they, they want to sell if they want to. Before that, the storage, you cannot choose but just to sell it as you harvest at the very low price. But now with the storage, people can choose to sell it at the highest point, usually before the, the next harvest, when all the supply is limited, right? So there is a huge income gain in the some of the household. So that's sort of, uh, um, it's not the project is said that's, that's just started maybe uh, in, into a second year now, but we started to see that kind of bits and pieces of it is that it's food value chains efficiency gain could lead to the household food security. Um, securing, the, the, that's, that's very important part of that, securing the food security at the household level. Another example is that in Central Asian countries, lots of, um, many um, Central Asian countries depend on their stable wheat from the import, imported, uh, importation from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is uh, the wheat major, one of the major wheat producing exporting countries. But not so much of the Kazakhstan's uh, problem, but uh, all the importing countries always depend on the half of their staple from the importation. Therefore, what Kazakhstan does really severely <laughs> influence their f the state of food security of those neighboring countries. There's one instance where the Kazakhstan was just, the harvest was just so great, but their transportation capacity and also the storage along the way to cross the border was very, very limited. Therefore, there are a lot of uh, wheat that was rotten along the way on the Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan side, and the, the importing countries are waiting for the, all the, the you know, delivery of the imported wheat to come along the way while they wait. They see all this high, you know, that the, the, the wheat prices goes up, the bread price goes up. That kind of instance is relatively common. So ADB's regional cooperation initiative 
is uh, also investing into rectify that inefficiency in the supply system, and also that's uh, involved the, some of the uh, improvement of this logistics for the uh, the delivery of the crop, but also trade agreement to minimize the uh, trade sort of a procedure so that they can deliver all the, the staple food for the rest of the region. That is uh, not traditional food security investment, yet it's just so significant investment for the, some of the countries in Central Asia. So those are the, how I see the value chain inefficiency can influence the food security state of many poor countries.